it's widely recognized that clinic blood pressure may not accurately reflect out-of-office blood pressure. Multiple studies now, epidemiological mostly from Europe and Asia, have demonstrated increased cardiovascular risk associated with isolated elevation of home blood pressure or marked masked hypertension. Now a new paper in Jack is addressing what other studies have not, and that's namely cardiovascular outcomes associated with masked hypertension and white coat hypertension in the general population in the U.S. This is from Jack, November 17th, 24th issue. It is a combined holiday issue, and we're talking target organ complications and cardiovascular events associated with masked hypertension and white coat hypertension. This is an analysis from the Dallas Heart Study. So I am with Dr. Juan Penn. Vong Patanison, who is an MD and a professor and director of the hypertension section at UT Southwestern Medical Center in Dallas. So first off, mast hypertension, it's a, com it's a term that we've used certainly, but what is it? So the easiest way to, to think about it is the reverse form of white coat. So white coat hypertension is uh, it's elevated blood pressure in the office, but normal blood pressure at home or out of office. But mast hypertension, interestingly, uh, patients have normal blood pressure at, at, in the clinic, but higher blood pressure at home or, or somewhere else, and, um, and um, is less well recognized uh, than white coat hypertension, but it, uh, increasing number of studies have shown that that's not a benign phenotype as what exactly. we show here. Which is really important. Yes. Okay, so what was the goal of this study, and how did you conduct this analysis of the Dallas Heart Study data? So as you already pointed out, it's been long known that when we measure blood pressure at home, or you know, when the patient measures blood pressure at home, the result can be very different from the measurement in the clinic. And uh, one of them is white coat, and one of them is mass. And uh, previous studies have shown conflicting uh, evidence in terms of what's the uh, what's the implication of these findings. And studies in Europe and Asia show that some show that white coat may be benign, some may show that it might increase risk. So we wanted to address those in the general population in the United States, which hasn't been done. Uh, and we have opportunity to do that in, in the Dallas Heart Study, which is a multi-ethnic study in, in a resident in Dallas County. Now, the study cohort, it was like 3,027 subjects and 50% were African American. Right, yes. Which is really important because right. they definitely get hypertension too and it's a major problem for yeah. them. Yes, you're absolutely right. So these are the population that has not been previous, previously addressed in uh, epidemiological studies from Europe and Japan, obviously. So what did you do and what did you find? So we had a blood pressure measurement at home uh, where our surveyor, who are not doctors or nurses, go to the uh, the participants home and measure the blood pressure and taking the history and we invited them to come to our medical facility and measure blood pressure using the same protocol and instruments and and uh, first of all we, it, interestingly we found that the prevalence of white coat hypertension is about three percent but mass hypertension is even much more common than we thought it's 18 percent almost one out of five people have mass hypertension more common than people with sustained hypertension who have high blood pressure both at home and in the clinic well, we definitely have done lots of articles and interviews, too, on the topic of white coat hypertension. But to think that mast hypertension is that much more prevalent, mm -hmm. but we really haven't talked about it that much. No, I, I don't think that this is actually uh, more, it's much more than we expected also. So and, and so we, we also uh, assessed what, what happened with the vasculature. So we did MRI of uh, aorta and found increased stiffness of people who have mass hypertension and white coat hypertension compared to those who have normal blood pressure both at home and in the clinic. Uh, though not as bad as people with high blood pressure all the time. Right, but still something we need to be paying attention yes, to. Yes, yes. So from a practical standpoint, what's the message here for clinicians? So I think that we, we uh, clinicians should pay attention more to the, the clinic, not just the clinic blood pressure, but blood pressure at home. And uh, because obviously they, they, it might tell us a very different story and we have to be careful about uh, perhaps to, uh, to recognize those phenotypes and recognize that they have actually, you know, we not only did the MRI, but we also uh, followed them over the period of nine years and they have uh, two fold increased risk of cardiovascular complication compared to people with normal blood pressure at home and in the clinic. I think one of the issues is that doctors may be not confident in the numbers that are given, gotten at home mm -hmm. because the machine, you know, yes. we're getting you better numbers here because we have a, we're much more professional in terms right. of getting your, your blood mm -hmm. pressure. 
how do you take care of that? How do you know what, what machine they're using and whether it's to be relied upon? Right. Well, that, that's very valid a point. The, the American Heart Association and, and a, a number of American Society of Hypertension has some website in terms of what blood pressure instrument that is reliable. And generally, uh, as it, has to, it should get a great A from uh, several organizations like AMI, British Hypertension Society and International Hypertension Society, but there are some website that you can refer to. And, and absolutely right, not, not only the blood pressure machine, but also the way you measure it. We always tell the patient to measure, you know, without not in the resting condition, not talking while they're trying to measure it, not using the wrist device because the wrist device is not accurate, and uh, try to avoid smoking and alcohol or, um, you know, caffeine right before, uh, before the measurement. So the bottom line is more patients have a different reading at home than we had thought, mm -hmm. and now we know that that is important in terms of the, what it's doing to the heart of the vascular system. Right, yes. Actually, our finding is actually quite in line with the recent recommendation from U.S. Preventive Task Force, who now actually recommend that if a physician find a patient to have high blood pressure in the clinic, that they should uh, ask the patient to record the blood pressure at home, or uh, they should order a 24-hour blood pressure monitoring to confirm before initiation of treatment. Uh, so typically, uh, the way the, if you find someone who have high blood pressure in the clinic, the next thing, physician usually schedule another appointment in the clinic. But if they, you have white coat, you're still going to have white coat. Does it also happen that if they're in the office and they have borderline hypertension, but they go home and they have actually masked hypertension because it's actually higher at home, does that happen? Oh, it's happened much more common than, than we thought. And, and so I think that... So um, that borderline patient may not really be borderline. Right, yes, yes. And, and until you get what's, what's happening at home, right. you don't know. Right, we don't get the picture and, and that can, can make a difference in terms of patient's outcome. Well, this is a paper that's in Jack and it's really quite interesting. It's target organ complications and cardiovascular events associated with mast hypertension and white coat hypertension. It again is the November 17th, 24th combined issue of Jack. And for CardioSource World News, I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.